To create a realistic model of the propagation of EMG signals along nerves and through muscles, we will want to solve Maxwell's equations. And we will want to solve Maxwell's equations over a spatial grid, which will allow us to account for the complex geometries and the material properties of the op upper body as shown here. On the left is an example Im image of normal anatomy, and on the right are the anatomies of two example amputees here for patient T5 and patient S1. Let's first consider FDTD, since we already know how to develop FDTD models, and FDTD is also a grid-based method for solving Maxwell's equations. To account for the small diameter of the four major nerves of the arms, we need a grid resolution on the order of one millimeter. Certainly, at a resolution of one millimeter, a 3D FDTD model of the chest or arm will be quite large, but we've learned how we can split up the grid onto multiple processors of a supercomputer in order to obtain results in a reasonable amount of time. So this shouldn't be a problem. But before deciding on FDTD, let's also consider the source and the time step increment, delta t. Delta t, the current limit, or the time step increment, for a three-dimensional grid having a one millimeter grid resolution will be delta divided by c square root of three, which turns out to be six picoseconds, or six times 10 to the minus 12 seconds. Okay, and so now let's consider the source. The source will be EMG signals traveling along nerves. The mean frequency of EMG signals is on the order of about 150 hertz. The period of 150 hertz signal is 1 over 150, which is 6.7 milliseconds, 10 to the minus 3 seconds. If we compare the period of this wave to the time step increment of our FDTD model, we can see that in order to model just a single wavelength of our EMG signal, we would have to time step the model out to t over delta t, which is 6.7 e to the minus 3 over 6 e to the minus 12, which is a difference of about 1.1 billion time steps delta t. Wow! Now, it's one thing to have a large FDTD grid with lots of grid cells. We can parallelize the code and obtain a solution faster. But the only way to solve a billion time steps in a reasonable amount of time is to use an ultra-fast supercomputer, one that is so fast it's not available yet today. Another general drawback of FDTD is that it typically solves Maxwell's equations on regular structured grids, meaning all the grid cells are usually the same size, and all the grid cells are also typically cubes or squares. This makes it challenging to model complex geometries like curved surfaces, where you would have to have a staircasing approximation across, uh, along the curved surface. And it's also difficult to use adaptive grids that have higher resolutions in some regions where there are smaller objects and for computational efficiency to use coarser resolutions elsewhere where there's homogeneous materials and the fields aren't changing as fast. For these two reasons, because the number of time steps required is unreasonably large and because modeling the complex geometries inside the body is more difficult in FDTD, for this application we need to consider another option. What do you think we should do instead? We still want to solve Maxwell's equations, and we want to solve them over a grid. Can you think of another option that we might have?